red flags, irregularities, and maybe missing money. Four pages of voided checks. There's a lot of unposting of checks, deleting of accounts. It's just extensive. That raised concerns. Most cities would try to hide this bad news, but not Lofton and not the new Marlin. Still, it doesn't surprise Bob Duncan, who knows what he calls the old Marlin all too well. Marlin's been corrupt for a long time in many facets. Lofton echoed those same feelings, but came clean at the Saturday press conference to maintain open communication with the people of Marlin. City Manager Cedric Davis calls that one of the reasons for this city audit in the first place. What the auditor said, right. he said start looking when you see a lot of void or a right. lot of movement. And he says that auditor found plenty, recommending a further step to assess the damage. We won't know until we get a forensic auditor looking at the books. Taking a microscopic look at the business dealings of Marlin. How much money is missing from Marlin? Well, without that detailed forensic audit, it's impossible to tell for sure to an exact dollar amount. However, there are people at City Hall that say that losses run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some even speculate as much as a million or more missing from the city coffers. What's happened obviously frustrates people here, but Mayor Lofton calls it just another project in her clean sweep of the town. If it's something negative that's being done, it needs to be exposed so that we can correct it. These city leaders did, including revealing the fact that the city's finance director quit just ahead of the audit's release but not once did they mention Vicki Grimes' name. We will get to the bottom of it. Well, our forensic auditor is going to reveal what's happened, how, and where. And hopefully, who? Something likely to pique the interest of the law. Delete, 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 delete. But for now, Marlin waits and wonders. City leaders have already alerted the FBI to the potential issues. First thing Monday, the Texas Attorney General and the State Comptroller will get information packages on the possible problems in Marlin. Still a little chilly out tonight, definitely jacket weather. First alert meteorologist Felicia Woody now joins us with our first look outside. Uh, nice, nice to use those jackets for a change. <laughs> uh, we've been leaving the jackets out for about mm -hmm. the last month or so, but yeah. for the most part, we are looking at 100% fall weather. At mm. least today felt like fall and not it like did. winter. It sure did, but it's, <laughs> but it's a nice thing. Yeah, this past week was a little brutal, but we are talking about a nice chilly night heading on into our Saturday. But one thing that we also have looking forward to tonight is an extra hour of sleep. But as we take a live look outside over Waco, at least we have a very quiet night. We're having a tough time trying to even find any kind of cloud cover out there for this evening, but temperatures are really starting to drop. We're already down to 42 degrees in Waco 43 in Gatesville. A couple places still hanging on to the 50 degree mark. But the main thing that's happening for tonight is the clocks are falling back one hour. So you will be enjoying the extra hour of sleep and that's going to be starting at two o'clock. This is a good time before you head off to bed to check the batteries and your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. And then the sunrise tomorrow. Not going to be at 746. It's actually going to be at 646 because of the daylight saving time ending, but sunsets are even earlier. We're going to be seeing the sunset tomorrow at 538. I'll show you what you can expect for the forecast coming up. All right. Thanks a lot, Felicia. 23 troopers from the 1st Cavalry Division returned home early this morning. 25 News, the station that connects Central Texas, the only media there to greet them. As 25 News reporter Elisa Navarro shows us, this relative handful of soldiers got a warm, emotional welcome home. Families and friends joined with their loved ones on Cooper Field after nine months of waiting. These troopers were the last remaining few that needed to return home after a larger group was sent to Afghanistan in February. After, you know, several months, you kind of transition to it a little bit and you kind of get used to it and time goes a little faster, but those first few months, it's, it feels really long. Lahalo Sui says it was time for her wife to come back home. But regardless of the time, she is proud of the work troopers, like her wife, do for our country. First Lieutenant Vertiber was also deployed in 